All righty. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Paul Hieronymus. I am the director of technology for the North Ridgeville City Schools, as well as the chairman of the Ohio Distance Learning Association. And uh, the conference has just now got started. And we will see uh, if we have anybody able to join us here. I know that the, in previous years, we've had people not be listed on the conference clicker and then say, hey, thanks, hello, at the end. So if you are here with us, uh, we'd love for you to be able to put your uh, name and where you're from in the discussion forum. That would be wonderful. So welcome, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share some content here, bring up our presentation. So everyone, if you're seeing this from the video or you're seeing this live, and we've now seen seven people pop into the room, which is fantastic. Welcome, everybody. Uh, great. We, I see that John's here from uh, Westerville. Awesome. Thank you here for joining us. Um, our flyers are and our handouts are all right off the website here. And uh, uh, you can go ahead and get this bit.ly link if you'd like it. And uh, you're welcome to have that. It's also in um, available in the handout section of the piece as well. So you can go ahead and be able to click on that as well and be able to get all of those cool handouts that are available on there. So thanks, everybody. We have uh, Julie also joining us. Thank you so much. We're thrilled that we can have some people here. And hopefully, we're going to be able to share some resources with you that I think you'll be able to take back to your schools like to, and start using as of tomorrow. It'd be fantastic. Thank you, John from Kettering. Thank you for joining as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and give, give us some introductions. Tom from Cleveland. Good, good morning, Tom. Um, again, my name is Paul Hieronymus. I'm the Ohio Distance Learning Association Chairman, and I'm also the Director of Technology and Integration for the North Ridgeville City Schools. Uh, the Ohio Distance Learning Association is a very unique organization in that we have no paid members. We are all volunteers happy to find ways to help you enhance your curriculums. And that's just, we're just all a bunch of people who are super passionate about distance learning. And if you'd like to be a part of our little group, you're welcome to, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that later on as well. Uh, with me today though, it's not just me, we have uh, the always impersonable and glamorous Carla Mello from the Ohio History Center. And I'm gonna give her a chance to unmute and say hello. Hello everyone. Um, as uh, Paul mentioned, uh, I'm Carl Mel with Ohio History Connection. I'm one of the many uh, providers that have a membership of the Ohio Distance Learning Association. And we're going to be talking a little bit about Ohio History Connection, our program, and also a grant that we've been part of, part of with OD, Ohio DLA in a moment. But for the timing being, I'm the manager of the Department of School and Teacher Support uh, at Ohio History Connection. And my team is in charge of all K-12 programming that we offer from uh, our center. So Paul, back to you. Excellent. So we're going to cram about as much information as humanly possible in the next 26 minutes, but we're going to have a little bit of fun with it as we as we go through. So we've really focused on interactive video, which many of you have already done. And so I'm going to quickly throw out a little quick question, throw a little quick poll out to you. Uh, just kind of wondering, you know, out of the big three platforms of interactive desktop video, which one do you guys use with your school district? If you wouldn't mind, go ahead and clicking on that. We see a, a Zoom clicking in there. And I want to also welcome Lindy from Granville, who just joined us as well. And anyone else, if, if you wouldn't mind just throwing your uh, your name into the uh, into the discussion forum, we'd love to hear where you're from. So God, just, so far, it's all been Zoom so far, which is great because be honest, that's my favorite platform, but they're all good. I mean, Teams does some nice stuff. You Meet does some nice stuff. We have some great stuff. Good. Oh, there's a Microsoft Teams in there. All right. So the kind of evening those things out a little bit as our poll goes forward. Uh, and now I'm going to throw up another poll in here just for fun. And uh, what do you use your stuff for? What do you, when you have Meets and Teams and, and Zooms, what do you do with them? And uh, so if you have a chance to throw out some ideas out here, and you probably have some that we're not even listening in there. So we've got some staff meetings. Yes, my favorite way. No, it's not. Uh, there's so many other great ways of doing it. We're going to show you some better ways of really enhancing. Oh, collaboration projects. Love it. Bringing in experts. Great stuff that's out there. We're going to share some great things with you on that. So while we're guys kind of clicking on around with that, I'm going to go ahead and to our presentation, just kind of remind everybody about some amazing sessions that are coming on. Tomorrow, we have the dream team of content providers coming to you, all museums and organizations that would love to jump into your classroom. Uh, some great opportunities that are available from them. Uh, so we'll, they'll be doing some presentation. And then also, Carla is going to be showing you an amazing opportunity for you to take advantage of so that you can have these come into your classroom for free, because we all love that. 
Uh, then we also have uh, Tammy from CILC to talk to you about a more of a national level of content providers. Then we have uh, some other providers. We got uh, David Stein and Michelle Carlo. We're going to talk about different ways that you can make Zoom and Teams enhance the way you use you, you uh, do business in your in your workplace, as well as some curriculum and design and development of transitioning your environments from that hybrid lesson to, to hybrid classroom to those back to school sessions. Uh, it was gonna be with our closers, Kathy Moore and Katrina Moore. And as you can tell by the spelling of the last name, no relation. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about our organization and why it, and just, we're gonna do that very briefly because there's one really important piece that we'll share with you in a second. So our group is made up into three different types of memberships. We've got consortium members, we've got educational members, and those are paid memberships. But we also have an area of associate participants, which is a free level of our organization. And we're hoping that after we share some of these great things about it, this bottom one here is something you wanna be able to sign up for and get our stuff directly into your inbox. So we'll talk to you a little bit about that here toward the end. So when we talk about our consortium, what's really neat about our consortium level is if a group is a consortium member, all of their schools are members of our organization. So if you are part of any of these ITCs, and we have all of them represented here, you can actually, you're actually a, a free member of Ohio Distance Learning Association. So everything we're sharing here with you is stuff that you could be able to take advantage of. So you might be getting updates of these opportunities through your ITCs or through one, maybe one of your ESCs, or maybe you're just not getting those at all. And that's why we also have the associate participant piece, which allows you to be able to sign up and get those opportunities. So we're just thrilled that all of our ITCs which are, are which is the backbone of your computer networks are all our consortium members, which allows us to then pass that on to you, which is awesome. We also have, and this is the more important one in my opinion, is well, not the more important, but I'd say the most valuable for the classroom teacher is our educational entities. And an educational entity is a single organization that provides a representation of their group to an organization. This would be a college, a museum, a metro park, a, um, a zoo. All of these are organizations that are educational entities. And Carla is one of those. And I'm gonna turn it over to Carla, who's going to go ahead and talk a little bit more about that. And Carla, when you need me to advance the slide, let me know. Yes, you can advance, uh, advance to the next one. It gives like a brief uh, introduction of, uh, of my organization. So. With Ohio History Connection, uh, we actually been members of Ohio Distance Learning Association for a very long time. Uh, and we've been doing virtual programming since uh, 1999. So it's not something that we are new at. Um, we have been associated to CLLC as well. We have received awards uh, for our virtual programming. And we are very proud of this history and also this experience. Um, and we take a lot of the advantage of our membership with the Ohio Distance Learning Association, as we're gonna see in just a bit. Uh, but um, primarily, our mission, mission of my organization, is to spark discovery of Ohio stories, embrace the present, share the past, and transform the future. Uh, the Ohio History Connection inspires all learners to use tools of history to understand ourselves and each other, to experience our world with curiosity, and to engage as change makers in our community. So all our programming that I'm going to show you in just a bit. Uh, is really falling to that umbrella. And every time that we are trying to create something new, we take all of this into consideration. So uh, Paul, I'm gonna share very quickly my um, screen here, if you allow me. Thank you. And while you're doing that, I just wanna mention, if anybody has any questions, please put them into the discussion forum. We will be happy to um, pull those up and uh, answer them as soon as we can. All right, so I will, uh, as you're gonna see here, you've probably seen a Padlet. Uh, Paul, if you wanna go ahead and put the bit.ly that I shared with you, uh, so you guys can also access this now and afterwards. Uh, we ha I have here the entire information about everything that we do for K-12. Uh, we're gonna be focusing primarily on this side of the Padlet here, which is what our virtual and synchronous experiences today, but you're also gonna find uh, information there about everything else that we do. Uh, things are very or, are organized by the type of experience. So synchronous virtual, you're going to see it's coming over here and it's spreading throughout this side of the Padlet. And we also have asynchronous virtual experiences, in-class experiences, and also experiences on our campus. 
some professional development for teachers, and those are also offered virtually, um, and more ways to engage with us. I'm not going to spend too much time in all of this because you're going to have time to explore this on your own uh, with the link that uh, Paul shared with you, but primarily just to give an idea of what we offer. Uh, so we have uh, very immersive and interactive experiences that focus either on a specific historical events or topics or also in historical thinking skills. So Underground Railroad is actually one of our main programs, it's very popular. Uh, we get bunches of reservations every single year. It's very interactive. Kids get to speak with our first person interpreters. Um, and as they are talking to the interpreters, which are Ohio Village residents from 1859, they, they are trying to figure out who the conductor of the Underground Railroad is. It's very interactive, very informative, um, and we always get, and it's actually an award winning uh, program for us. We also have the snapshot program. We have three, to three uh, topics. And this is really so around exploring primary sources, primarily photographs and images, and trying to obtain information from them. So we analyze collections of material and, and teach and show students how to get information from it. Again, very interactive. All the time we are talking to the students live and asking questions, they're asking questions to us, and we have a very good back and forth. As you're gonna see, depending on the topic that we offer, of course, they are more appropriate for different grades, uh, different grade brand, bands. And we also, of course, personalize and change the programs slightly depending on the grade band that we have. So if we have a program that is for eighth and uh, fourth and eighth, we're going to adjust the, the, the material and adjust the depth of the discussion according to the grade band. We also have our game show style programs, which are a great way to pass the knowledge of your students in the classroom. We have two primary topics right now, government and elections. And it is, as I mentioned, a game show. So they join us. Uh, we are very like, animated and we make sure that they, we have groups and they are competing to, uh, among each other to see who knows more about election or the government. Uh, and in, in between the program, we also offer a lot of new knowledge and a lot of uh, backstory to explain some concepts, especially when we feel that the students are not really, oh, they got, both of the teams got this wrong. Let's talk a little bit more about it. Also, again, it's, be, it's a program that has been with us for a long time because it's been very successful. We, are, we have the cultural tradition program, which every we try to update it every two years or so. And we have different um, traditions that we explore with community partners. We have different people that you know join us and talk about their traditions. And that's for a younger uh, grade band, more like K through four. Uh, but again, also very successful. So you guys are going to be able to see this with the Padlet. I'm not going to extend my part for too long. Um, for the moment, I will just stop sharing right now, uh, Paul, so you can get back to your uh, presentation. And then in a moment, we're going to talk a little bit about one of the great opportunities to actually get all this programming for free. Well, thank you, Carla. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up our presentation here again. If anybody has any questions, feel free to put them into the for, uh, discussion forum, and we'll be happy to get to those ASAP. So, with that, I'm going to, we want to talk a little bit about, you know, Carla's programs. As I put into the chat here, real quick, is, or the discussion forum, that all sessions are are right on your bell schedule. They are on demand. They are scheduled to your if you're a 825 to you know 916 person. Uh, they work right on your schedule and do that uh, just like that in, in that yeah, format. Yeah, if you guys click on each one of the parts of the padlock for for each one of the programs, it's actually going to take you to our reservation system with with, with CRLC, and we'll allow you to pick three uh, three different dates and times. Um, and then we try, of course, to accommodate uh, your request according to our availability. We have times of the year that we get really, really busy. We are actually right now in one of those. So between uh, February and May, uh, it gets harder and harder to book things because we get really uh, booked up. Uh, but yeah, take a look. And there are many, many ways that we can you know, be with you in your classroom. So all these sessions, Technically, when they're when in the connection format is free, where I mean it doesn't cost anything for us to connect to Carla or to the Pro Football Hall of Fame or to any of our our uh, content providers. Um, what is charged for though is the person's time on the other end, and that's what you're receiving is the curriculum and the lesson that they're doing. But it's a great opportunity to have someone like Carla take over your classroom for that 
classroom period, which is pretty awesome. Now, these always are inhibiting to many people because when we say the word cost, everyone kind of puckers up pretty quickly. So we want to just share a great opportunity that we have. We were lucky enough to receive a remote edX grant that is for only Ohio schools that you can actually then be able to purchase these programs under the grant. So you've while we say purchase, you're getting them for free. And I'm going to let Carla talk a little bit about that. If Carla, is, did you want to do that or you want me to? You're on mute still. Yeah, if there you allow you. me to just share my screen, that would be great. All righty, we'll go back in there and go ahead, Carla. Awesome. All right, so you guys are going to see here, um, this is uh, the Ohio Distance Learning Association page for the Remote Adax Grant. Uh, we were very lucky to partner with them, and you're going to see here, we are not the only ones. We have plenty of other Ohio organizations as part of this uh, program, um, and it was also a huge opportunity because we were one of seven uh, organizations that actually got uh, a grant like that, and this grant, our particular grant, allows teachers to fill out a form that I'm gonna, also going to show here. So it's a very simple form. You say who you are, what program you want. And uh, somebody from Florida that is actually coordinating these uh, requests, you're gonna send you an email like, yes, you got it, or no, you didn't. But most people are getting their request accepted. Um, and in that way, they connect, a, they connect you or your teachers with the organization that you're trying to get a program for. And then we go ahead and schedule. So for Ohio District Connection, I get an email, say, hey, you, this person got their request accepted. So I reach out to them, we work on the scheduling, uh, and then we offer. So basically, we get uh, from the grant the money to support that uh, delivery of that program, and the schools don't have to pay anything. So it's a very, it's a great, great, great opportunity. Uh, now, why some providers have materials that are behind a paywall and why others don't? So some providers are luckier than others, and they have donors or they have additional funding or external fund funding that allows them to do their programming for free. In our case, Ohio History Connection, unfortunately, we have to charge for some of our programs so we keep them available. We, knew, we do need to charge and keep like, we need to uh, pay for the people that have to deliver the program, for the platform that we use to deliver it, uh, for the reservation system that we have to use. So it comes with a lot of cost for us. And because we are a nonprofit, we are not charging to get a profit out of it. We are charging so we can keep doing it. Um, and luckily enough, uh, we have enough uh, people that like our programs and keep coming back. So we keep those programs going. So that's why you're going to see uh, all the lists. So all these providers actually charge for their program normally, but under the Remote Adax grant opportunity, you guys can ask for uh, programming from them and have the grant cover that cost for you. So just for you to have an idea, we have Cleveland Museum of Natural History, and you're gonna see the list of things that you can ask from them. It's a very, very long list. We have the zoo here in Columbus. We have East Central Ohio Education Centers, uh, Service Center. We have the Great Lakes Science Center. We have Muskegon Valley Education Service Center. And again, all the descriptions, all the things that they are offering under the grant ourselves. Uh, so SOIDA, as I mentioned, which is also uh, doing some of the administra administration work for, for the grant. And as you can see, a lot of offering, a lot of opportunities of things that you can choose from. And just to have an idea, we also put it in here, what are the platforms that some of the organizations provide program on? Uh, most of, of, of them, some of them, as you can see here, including ourselves, we operate all these platforms. Some of them do prefer one more, more than others. Uh, as many of you, Zoom for us is actually our primarily use, like the one that we use to deliver most of the programming and the one that we prefer, but we can deliver in all the other platforms if necessary. So I'm just going to stop sharing for a moment. Um, so, uh, and Paul, if you could put that link for this page on the it's chat, in there. Be awesome. Excellent. Yep. I'm going to stop sharing right. here and just to give you guys, uh, again, you can go there, click on the form. Fill it out, takes a minute to fill out that form, and you might be able to uh, get this programming for free. And we put the link for this as well as the Ohio Distance Learning Association page in the, uh, um, in the discussion forum as well. 
And so again, there's just some quick snap screenshots of that. And that form is just kind of in the paragraph there. Every once in a while, people can't find it. So just a, just a heads up where that is located. Let's also talk about the next piece about this. And this is where you can get this information directly without having to wait for it to be filtered down to you. And that's by becoming an associate participant. An associate participant is uh, gives us you the ability to uh, be able to receive content as part of our listservs. One of the things that's really excited that we launched this year, which we're really excited about, is our collaborative projects that we're running now statewide. Uh, some of the ones that we've done already, we've done our monster match, which has been a huge success, had a great turnout from that. Uh, and then we also had one of my favorite programs, which is our holiday storytelling extravaganza. We went for two straight days, all day long Zoom conferences, where every half hour we brought in a different guest speaker. And guess what? They were, most, they were mostly your administrators who came in and just gave up a little bit of their time to read stories to kids. And it was an amazing thing that classes were able to connect to, whether they had a camera or not. They were even able to just be able to connect and just listen if they wanted to, which is a, a really neat opportunity. All these events are things that are being passed down through our listserv. Um, the Math Marvels is going to be our next project. It was originally going to be starting up around January and February. Then we realized that we we're going to kind of get a little too close to state testing. So we thought maybe we should push that back to late April. So Math Marvels is actually a great grow, uh, program for middle schoolers that give them the opportunity to put themselves in a quiz bowl type of activity where they are creating game show of word problems. But the word problems are designed by one class to another class who is then having the students compete within their classroom. So it's a great uh, uh, interactive, fun way to kind of wrap up your school year with some fun math and some great uh, skills. So I want to just share with you a couple of things here, just a quick example of those. Uh, I've got seven minutes, so I'll go uh, very quickly. I'm going to start off with just a quick example of what the Monster Match looked like. This is a great program where you, this is grades for our, our second and third graders who are creating monsters, had the right descriptions, then present them to their other class while they, when they recreated them. I'm going to show you a very quick little video clip from that. Give me one second, unless I click that and I get the wrong one to open. What is going on? There we go. Try this again now. See if I can get this full screen. Maybe not. Okay, real quick, I wanted to ask real quick, are you hearing the audio of my video? Because that really dampens the whole impact of this video if you're not hearing it. If someone could do me a favor and throw it in the uh, in the message. No, okay, well then on that note, we are going to figure out what in the wide, wide world of sports was going on with that. Thank you all for sharing that. I'm glad we did not get too far into that. But um, as you can see, as I'm talking here over it, because it's not going to make a difference now, um, that we our students create their monsters and then the wonderful kids, oh, now you can. You can hear it now. Well, in general, though, we have our students are we want the students really to work. OK, now we're now they say the audio is coming through. Well, we'll just give it a shot here. OK, no audio from the video. OK, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate that because we don't want to waste your time with it. But we we're really thrilled that we had uh, quite a few classes that connected and we were able to uh, pull some I'll just go ahead and just pull that through here. And so what we do is we get the kids really working on their writing skills, then they're following directions, collaboration, and then presenting skills, which is a great opportunity for them to be engaged in the program. And they really enjoy the program. The other one I was going to show you is our holiday storytelling extravaganza. But without the sound, that really is um, a tough one to uh, really get the, get the excitement of. So we'll, we'll have, go ahead and we'll have to not have that piece of it, but that's OK. Um, it's, you, you guys all get the point. We're doing screen share of our books and we're going ahead and just having adults read stories. And we had a great turnout from that as well. And hopefully we can have you be a part of that next year. So let's talk a little bit about the associate participant piece and how you can become a member of the Ohio DOA for that. And uh, so there's just two quick links I'll throw over there and I'll also throw it into our discussion forum because we would love for you to join our listserv and be able to get these things coming to you directly. That's just our Google form that we have for it. Uh, if you uh, want to be on that listserv, you go ahead and click on the Ohio DOA membership form. And when you get down to the membership level, you want to choose associate because that's the one that's for free. 
And then that way we add you to the listserv. And then as our opportunities come up and they're available, registration opportunities, all kinds of things, we throw that out to you and then you can be able to take advantage of them with your classes. And we would love to have you be active members of the activities that we have going on. So with that, we're just down to our last couple of minutes before we get the shepherd's hook from the conference system here. Um, we wanted to just check to see if there is any questions from our audience. Uh, we have several of you still connected here. And um, we will go ahead and kind of make sure everybody remembers that all of these resources are in the handouts. We will also be taking the videos and we will drop those into the handout area as well. So please, if you would mind, save that link that you get from that, from that and then you can come back to it later and have, actually have access to those videos to watch them with audio. Sorry about that, everybody. We just kind of have that from time to time. So with that, we're kind of getting into our final minute here. Just wanted to just, again, thank everybody for being a part of our program here today. And most importantly, we hope that we get to see you online for something more than a staff meeting, right? Let's have some chance to enhance our curriculum and go ahead with uh, some great opportunities there. Um, hopefully, we'd also just to remind people again, content provider showcase, see the who's who in Ohio for content providers, as well as our other great sessions that are coming up. Because I think one of the things you'll find is if you look around the state, the other around the country for content providers, our, our content providers are listed on other, all the other states across the country. And yeah, we're just- a little plug. Uh, Paul, I'm going to be joining Tammy on Wednesday for her CLLC pro, uh, presentation. Uh, in fact, as an Ohio provider that is connected to them. Uh, and actually, we get from them, last year we got 75% of our reservations all came from outside of Ohio. So Ohio is kind of missing out <laughs> on some of the things that we are doing. So well, we always do it right. It's tough to be a prophet in your own land, Carla. I know, I know. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of great materials in CLLC, and you guys should definitely check that out. Well, great. Well, thank you so much, everybody. We really thank you for being part of our program. We are in our last couple, uh, we're in like a minute and a half left to go. So we want to thank you again for being part of our program. And hopefully we see you online in the, uh, in the near future in this conference, as well as online for other events. So with that, thank you, everybody. We appreciate it. Thank you all.